Hello everyone, I am Tassa and today I will be going over the two 2.0 previews. The links to them will be in the description if you happen to have not seen them yet. Uh, if you uh, update 2.0 will be out in about uh, whenever uh, Apple approves it and then it'll probably be about a day or two after that. It's been in for about a week now and it usually takes about two weeks. So I'd say probably within the next few days to about a week uh, 2.0 should be here. So I'm just going to do my commentary over it, give some impressions, as well as some things mentioned on the forums that some of you might not have been keeping up with, just so I can sum it up all right here if, uh, with these two previews. So let's get into watching it. Hello, adventurers. It's Syrian here. And Nimhain. Uh, with the Nimhain thing, uh, there was actually a post before this video went up, like a couple of days before on the forum, uh, saying that Nimhain should do the commentary for the entire video. And while they didn't, they did do a shout out with her. So I, that was much appreciated to a lot of us. Hi, everyone. With the first look at our 2.0 PvP update. Not much has changed. Also, they named themselves Goblin Lover. They are trolling so hard. On the map screen, the PvP button is still exactly where it used to be. So let's jump into the PvP menu and take a look at some <coughs> cool new stuff. As you can see from the buttons on the bottom, uh, as you can see by the refresh button, I like how he doesn't even mention this pretty much like the entire time. But uh, to refresh the ranked PvP, it co does cost 5 gems now. Uh, if they haven't fixed it yet, there is a way to avoid this. If you completely shut down Gems of War and then restart it back up, uh, it resets all your teams currently. So if they haven't fixed that in 2.0, you could just do that and you wouldn't have to pay the 5 um, gems to refresh your PvP. So if you're very low on gems, you could probably do that. I'll probably just click refresh because it'll save like 10 seconds, but that's just because I have thousands of them at this point. At the bottom of the menu, we have two PvP modes, ranked and casual. We're going to start on the ranked tab and work our way across. In 2.0, every time you enter PvP, you're given a choice of three opponents. One easy, one medium, and one difficult. At the bottom of each opponent's card, we show the rewards you can win for that battle. We show gold, trophies, glory, and those two small numbers on the right, they are PvP points. They're used to determine your tier, 15 to 1, much like the old system, and they're also used on the PvP ladder to determine your ranking. If you win, you get the points on the top. If you lose or quit out, you lose the points shown on the bottom. <coughs> ah, coughing a lot right now. Anyways, uh, with quitting out, uh, one major thing that they'll have in this update is you will be losing PvP points for it. I don't believe you'll be losing trophies for it, but you'll definitely be losing uh, PvP points. This will make your uh, ranking go down, so you can't actually just um, force exit like you can right now and skip people. This will lead to some uh, pretty interesting teams because you can use like extremely uh, trollish troops like uh, Warhounds who will reduce attack and leave a team uh, pretty useless, at least attack-wise. And a lot of those like really weird teams might start showing up in defense now when 2.0 goes live because people can't just for force exit now. Like I know uh, one pretty popular one before um, Stella Stasio was nerfed was having four of her on a team and people would just exit out because it would take so long for some team compositions to kill it. But now exiting, force exiting out of a match will actually deduct the points. We've also rolled the whole revenge battle system into this screen. If someone's attacked you on one, one of these battles may be listed as a revenge. Or if it's someone you've fought a lot before, they may be listed as a rival. Revenge battles and rival battles are worth lots of extra glory. Yeah, revenge and rival battles are going to be uh, pretty interesting because you will be able to accumulate quite a bit more glory with them. We still quite don't know what will determine a rival. But, uh, of course, the actual defense will be pretty obvious since it's basically just composed of whoever has attacked you. Something else that they mentioned with the defense, because they have been hearing everyone uh, complaining a bit, like sometimes they don't get invaded for like a couple days or sometimes even a week. Uh, something that they changed that they didn't mention in either of these two videos is there will be a revenge battle about every um, two to four matches or so, regardless of if, if you have been invaded or not. So you'll still be getting those revenge points ticking up at the um, reward that you get every um, five defend wins. So you'll still be able to get that even if you aren't having anyone actually invading you. It'll show as if some people are. 
it won't actually take the resources from you like your gold but it'll show up so you can get the extra points if you're going like long periods without any anyone attacking you now the casual menu looks a lot like the ranked menu except there's no pvp points here yeah with no pvp points in the casual menu i don't even really see casual players really wanting to go here because if you just play in the casual you'll forever be rank 15 unless your defense happen to like raise you above the threshold so i definitely advise playing in the ranked at least until you find it to be like too hard that you can't handle anymore then just go into casual but you'll definitely want to play at least some of the ranked or else you won't really get any of the bonuses that you do now plus a lot of these um, give zero trophies so if you're in a low guild you might actually get kicked out of one if your trophy thing is too low. Uh, most of them are pretty lenient, but they still there are still quite a few low guilds that have a small minimum requirement. And um, doing any of these zero ones would definitely be a bad idea. The one one is basically just exactly what it is now, except with one less glory. Because casual battles don't count towards your rank or your tier. They also have slightly reduced rewards, but you can play as many as you want, and you can still win some glory and trophies for your guild. Oh, one other thing that that reminded me of, you can't actually lose trophies now, or at least in casual, I know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure they mentioned you can't lose it in um, the ranked as well. So that'll be kind of nice for people that might have a little bit of a lower uh, win rate. They won't actually be lowering your trophies. It also will prevent like a person just going into a guild and then just trophy sniping them down for, like a couple hundred. That won't be possible anymore. Now you may have noticed on these two screens a small blue number above each opponent's card. That's the team score, and it represents how difficult that fight is going to be. Yeah, team score was actually suggested uh, almost like about six months ago, and they, had, uh, they finally implemented which is really nice. It should help a lot with balancing teams, because now you'll know immediately if someone's like a real big end game player or not, or if you're in like the early game, you'll know if they're pay to win or anything like that. So you'll be able to avoid uh, people that you don't want to face. Plus, it has the automatic one scout. All of these are showing one troop from the enemy team. So without even spending the gold to scout, you already have one of the enemies scouted. So that helps too to know the team. The team score comprises the quality of the troops in the team, and also a hero's advancement and the kingdom bonuses he's gained. <coughs> oh, and the troop we show on each opponent's card, that's simply one of the troops from his team. Yeah, he just mentioned no it there. what you're going to be facing. Of course, you can still scout each opponent and back out if you don't like what you see. Now we have the stats tab. Yeah, the stats tab will be really interesting to see what people's win rate is. Because now that they can't uh, just like evade a uh, match. Like if you're in a match and you leave it now, it's actually going to be counting as a lose. Another thing to mention is um, uh, most people know that the fans are pretty easy to take out especially more towards the late game. And you do need a little bit over a 50% win rate to net a positive gain on your PvP points for defense. So that's something to think about. PvP progress. I did a video on it earlier on um, defend builds that you might want to build for the next update because they are going to start to matter. You're going to want to have at least a 50% right there. ...event this week up the top and overall career progress down the bottom. You'll also see two buffs <coughs> <for> rewards. <laughs> We have the tier rewards for tier 15 to 1, and we also have ranked rewards. Um, every single week, it seems like, based on these being a 100 spread, you'll start off at 500, and then you'll just go up and down from there. I say up and down because uh, defense will be able to um, shift that too. And um, even if you don't play rank, I believe your defense will still make you possibly go up these and down these thresholds, even if you don't uh, participate in a single... Um, actual ranked match so people that just want to play casual you might actually get ranked up some if you put up a good put up a good defense where you finish on the pvp ladder each week we think it's going to be a little bit more difficult to reach tier one so if you reach tier five yeah they actually made it quite a bit more difficult someone did the math on the form and it takes about three times longer to reach rank one the good part about it though is rank five is basically what rank one is now uh, rank 1 right now gives 2,000 gold, 300 souls, 10 keys, and 100 glory. Rank 5 right here, because they accumulate every single one. It's not, it's not the total. You get it every single one as you go up. So rank 5 here totals at uh, 2,125 gold, which is 
125 more gold, uh, 275 souls, which is 25 less than rank one now, 15 keys, which is five more keys than what it is now, and 105 glory, which is five more glory than what it is now. So this is basically what rank one is right now, rank five. And if you go all the way up to rank one, it is 2,375 more gold than it is now. It is 235 more souls than rank one now. It is over four times more keys at uh, 46 keys um, when you reach rank one in this system. So that is quite a bit more keys. Also, um, these keys should be glory keys. They put the wrong icon of gold keys. Or I believe that it should be. Because I know it gives glory keys now, and it would make sense if these are actually glory keys. And uh, lastly, it would give uh, 275 glory in this system, up from the 100. So that's the 175 more glory for getting to rank 1. So quite a bit more resources there. Five, you'll get about the same reward you did from tier 1 before. Beyond that, it's all a bonus. The ranked rewards are really interesting, though. And we've got a few surprises waiting for you there. Oh, also, he mentions it later in the video. I don't know why I didn't mention it here. And I almost forgot to mention it, too. But um, you get to claim these every single level as you go up. So uh, let's say you've just reached rank 11, and then you reach up to rank 10. You can claim that 11, then that 10, then you say, let's say you reach rank 9. You can claim that, too. If you go below rank 9, I'm pretty sure, back to 10, I'm pretty sure you'll still be able to have that reward you just claimed. They're not going to, like, untake it from you. So, um, what all you'd really need to do in a single week is rush up to uh, rank 1, and then it doesn't even matter if you win or lose defense because you just claimed all the rewards. The ranked rewards are really interesting, though. And we've got a few surprises waiting for you there, including bundles of arcane trade stones for our best players every week. Yeah, these arcane trade stones, um, Surian did mention on the forum, they are uh, most likely going to be tied in with the kingdom of the week. So uh, let's say tomorrow's or um, next week's kingdom is going to be Zaijin. So it would be um, brown green if that was so happened to be the week. I mentioned that because this 2.0 update is likely coming next week. So um, this is likely the trade stone that will be for the uh, first 20 ranks. One final thing. As you reach a new tier in PvP, you'll be able to come here and collect your rewards for that tier immediately. Oh, they, they mentioned thing I said earlier. Also, uh, one other thing, I don't know why they quite did it, is these gems here. Anyone who's making, like, the top 50 on the entire global leaderboard likely does not need that little bit of gems. They need the arcane traits, that's for sure. Maybe the souls. A lot of people up here don't even need that souls. The gold is nice, but these gems are really out of place. Like, especially if they're refreshing. That five gems is just one refresh. So maybe they'll replace that with something or hire it. I don't know. It just says, that just seems like the oddest reward that they can possibly have here, especially if that amount. If you tier in PvP, you'll be able to come here and collect your rewards for that tier immediately. No waiting till the end of the week for that one. Next up, we have the battle log. This shows your results for the current week's PvP event, both wins and losses in offense and defense. And you can even view information about each hero in the list. Yeah, these profiles are going to be... Pro it's just actually one of my favorite things that is coming in next update. Because it really brings um, in-game communication up. Because now you'll be able to go into, like, ch um, chat channel 001, which is, like, basically the global chat for this game now. Everyone just goes to ch um, channel 001 as the uh, main chat channel if you want to chat in-game. So you know that now if you want to go chat. It's a great place to, like, recruit and try finding guilds and... Uh, all the things like that, discussing the games, whenever anyone streams or stuff like that, they normally announce it in there too. Um, and it'll be really good having this menu now, because you'll know the basic information about them, and you'll also be able to see their defend team, and you'll be able to recruit them directly from here. You won't have to like go type in your code into the chat and do all that other small communication and stuff like that. Also, they don't mention it in either of the two previews, or on the forums yet, but I know they've mentioned in the past, um, this right here, this button that says coming soon, is likely the friends list. They aren't up, uh, they aren't bringing it in to 2.0, but it will likely be in one of the, uh, the next one or the following um, uh, major update, like 2.1 or 2.2. This will likely be the friend list um, button. And a quick side note, you can also do that in the leaderboard menu and the chat window by selecting a hero's name. The Defender's screen is straightforward. 
Not much has changed here. So we'll move right. Actually, a uh, bit has changed here. Now that Revenges are in ranked uh, PvP, this bar right here will be going up a lot faster than it currently does. I'm pretty sure really active per people can actually get this bar completely filled in a day, compared to now when it would probably take almost a week. So you'll definitely be able to get this up higher, because like I said earlier, there'll be an automatic revenge about every two to four battles. So this is are going to be ticking up constantly. And if you get attacked a bunch, it's going to be going up even further. And um, he hasn't, um, no word has been said on it, but rivals may also tick this up. We don't know, I have confirmation on that yet. Though. Right along to the leaderboards. Here, you can see the top 100 players, <coughs> along with your place in the globe. Uh, something that will be interesting with these, uh, because you'll likely be able to click on these names to see their profiles and everything. Um, I have a feeling a lot of people are just going to take the teams from like the top 10-ish players and then use that as their defense. So a lot of people's defense might start getting really tough when uh, 2.0 rolls around. One other thing that wasn't mentioned in this video that they did mention a while back is they're going to have more interactive like refreshes every single week. So when the new vent rolls around, you may notice um, like when it currently does, you may notice like a lot of lower players. You might even find people who are like inactive throughout the week and stuff like that. Um, starting in 2.0, every single week it is going to refresh at the start of the event. So people who are inactive won't actually show up in defense and stuff like that. So you'll be getting slightly harder battles between all of these factors. Global leaderboard. Every week we have prizes for the top 1,000 players. <coughs> and yeah, sorry about that. Big cough. <laughs> That is our new PvP system. Okay, that's the first preview. So let's get into the other one. Again, they're both going to be in the um, description if you want to watch either of them on their own and without my commentary. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this one. Hello, adventurers. It's Syrian here with the second preview for the 2.0 update of Gems of War. We decided it was time to freshen up the victory and defeat screens at the end of each battle. So we've added new sequences there that more clearly show the reward. Yes, we have no more quick spam anymore at the end of battles. This will be much appreciated by a lot of people, especially towards the late game when you have to go through like 10 menus, just keep clicking to get through them all. Now they do it completely on one simple screen, just like many other things in this game. It works much better than what it does. It also has like some kind of flavor text on the bottom. I have no clue what that's about. My thing's kind of over it, but you'll get the point. It's just there, kind of just to be funny. Because you notice um, in the previous video, they don't have that little um, joke thing anymore with that one guy and it switches through your PvP whenever you like search for people. It doesn't have those joke comments anymore, so I guess they replaced it with um, this so comment on the bottom. There, but more clearly show the reward you received. Previously, summoned troops were limited to level 15. Not anymore. Now a summoned troop is only limited by the level you've raised it to. So if you've raised that giant spider to level 20, when Doc Alpha summons him, he will come in at level 20, with all of his level skill bonuses and his mythic skill bonuses in place. Furthermore, if you've unlocked any traits on that giant spider, he will come in with those too. And that's not all. A summoned troop will also come in with any kingdom bonuses that you have. Yes, yeah, so summons have been buffed by a lot, <laughs> by an extreme amount. Um, the most notable thing um, to mention is troops are capped at the level that you have them level to. So let's say you had a Dark Master and he can summon a level 12 Thrall, for instance. But your Thrall is only level 10. That um, Thrall is going to come as a level 10, even though your Dark Master can summon it to a level 12. So it's restricted by what you have it currently to. So uh, if you're going to be summons, summoning something, you'll want to have that as upgraded as possible, or else it might get uh, capped out. And any team bonuses that applied at the start of the battle. Of course, none of these changes apply to the arena. We're keeping that a level playing field. Now there is one troop that these changes affect, and that is Infernal King. His third trait is Immortal. And that allows him a chance to resurrect when he's killed. So now he comes back much stronger. We've reduced the chance of him resurrecting. Yes, I'm really curious what they reduced it to. 
If it's 15% or lower, you likely will see him at a normal rate. If it's like 20 or 25%, he'll be used a lot more often than he currently is. Because resurrecting yourself at full stats, that's going to be really annoying. That's basically like an evade on steroids. Since it's, it's, it's in his, his entire life, all his attack, all his everything. He just comes right back. So that'll be interesting how that pans out. Of course, we'll offer a refund for him for one week after 2. You don't need a refund him. I still think he's great value as a troop. But the refund is there if you want it. Now the next surprise for 2.0 is Mythic Troops. This is the first time we've done triple mana color troops in the game. And each one has a very powerful but very expensive spell. They can be obtained from glory chests and at a much greater chance at gem chests and VIP chests. Okay, these things are absolutely amazing. I'm actually surprised they did something like this. So now every single month we're going to be having a new Mythic Troop. Which will do some kind of crazy ability. Probably have some other crazy trait. So these will be a lot of fun to use. Unfortunately, they will be pretty hard to get. They'll obviously be harder to get than Legends. And Legends already are a little bit hard to get. But luckily, you can find them and as something as low as a Glory Key. So a lot of people can still obtain them. It'll definitely take a long while. Like this first one coming out, more casual players might not have them for a couple months. But... I'll be making sure to do videos and stuff on them when, as soon as each one comes out. There'll be a new mythic troop every month. Yeah, every month. Plan to have the first one available shortly after 2.0 goes live. The only problem with them doing it shortly after is when everyone like rushes to get all of the glacial peak troops for the new kingdom that's coming. None of those keys are going to have any chance of getting this mythic. So you might want to hold off on using too many of your keys until uh, the first mythic comes out so you'll actually be able to have a chance of getting it with all the keys that you open speaking of vip chests we have a little something for our vip customers now when you pull an epic card you get two copies of that card and when you pull a trade stone you'll get two copies of that trade stone along with a bonus 2000 gold for every chest opened and the chance of a mythic we feel this really improves the value of vip chests yeah, VIP chests are going to be a lot better now. Uh, before, event chests could actually outperform them, but now VIP chests are indeed the absolute best chest. It is slightly pay-to-win to a degree, because you don't get VIP chests unless you spend $130 on this game, which is quite a bit of money to spend on a game. But um, if you don't have it, if you're playing free-to-play, just stick with gem chests. They're absolutely fine. And uh, gem chests might overall have a better chance because you can open a lot of gem chests for the cost that um, VIP chest costs. So just keep spamming those gem chests if you're a free-to-play player. Plus, you can get uh, mythic troops from glory keys and stuff like that. So you still have uh, things that you can do. The only thing I feel like this event did is um, event chests are kind of, or this update did, is event chests are kind of going to get phased out now because anyone who has VIP chests will just do uh, VIP chests now. There's kind of no point in event chests for people who have VIP chests available. So um, if you're still a free player, you might want to go to event chests occasionally just to get like that legend that you need. But gem chests for free to play players are going to have a much better chance of getting mythics. So keep that in mind. Oh, also, uh, let's see if it goes back real quick. We can actually see the color of the next troop. I don't know if you can see it that well right there, but it is yellow, red, and brown. So we know that the next, the first mythic troop, or that's likely the first, is going to be yellow, red, and brown. So we'll see how that goes. So it wouldn't be an update without a new kingdom to collect. Welcome to Glacial Peaks in the far north of Cristara. Now you need to be level 25 to unlock this new kingdom. But once you do, you'll get to trap. People aren't level 25 yet. <laughs> I always find that crazy. Like I'm so into the light game right now that I sometimes forget that uh, these level caps even exist on kingdoms, but yeah. Travel with a high elven sage named Tassarian and beat Queen Mab of the Winter Fey and her frost dragon Borealis. Along okay, um, just as a warning, you're going to see Queen Mab a lot in the next patch. I won't actually say what she does. I have on the forum. I won't spoil it here, though. But you will see her a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like... Maybe like a fourth of the defend teams you see will have her in it. 
She's going to be really popular. And with all the other troops you find in any kingdom, that's a new companion for finishing the quest line and two new legendary troops to collect. Yeah, both these are legends, too. As well as the dragon is pretty badass. Freezing their opponents. The troops of Glacial Peaks also have a new mechanic called Mana Burn. Mana Burn damages an enemy based on the amount of mana they've collected. Boost I originally thought that Mana Burn was actually a Mana Drain, then it also damages as well. But I have been corrected on it, and it does seem to be like it is just a um, damage. It, base, it damages them based on how much mana they have, and then it's boosted by their magic at whatever ratio that troop happens to have. They don't show it in the video what it boosts by. by the caster's magic. It's not a game-changing spell, but it can be it kind really of is. useful against troops with high mana costs, especially since it's often quite cheap to cast. Now, one thing we hinted at in the previous video we never went into too much detail about you still don't go into too much detail about it in this case <laughs> qa cat has tapped on freddo's name in chat and brought up his hero profile she can then invite him to a guild or play against him in a friendly battle now friendly battles aren't worth any rewards but they're a great way to test out somebody's defenders and here's one final tidbit for you a small change to the treasure game all right this is a pretty good change actually rewards for red chests and vaults so you no longer get the things you don't want We've taken the gold out from red chests, and we've taken gold and souls out from vaults. It gives you a much greater chance to get that gem key you're looking for. We hope you like all these small improvements. Okay, so that's everything that's uh, going to be in the 2.0 update. Uh, one other thing that they didn't mention is the Mechanist class is going to be getting his uh, legendary ability, whatever that might be. Plus, there are likely to be some other classes that they're going to be um, sneaking into... Um, between 2.0 just over the next month and so so that's also something that's kind of um coming into the 2.0 patch so uh that's basically everything with it and i hope this was helpful in understanding what's coming within the next few days in the next patch i'll be doing plenty of videos going over basically everything that's going to be changing added all that so keep an eye out for that well i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in the next one goodbye